Government finalizing loan agreement with GCNA for disbursement of cabinet-approved financial package. Details of this story and more in the National Report. Welcome back. With the details to the news for Wednesday, June 24, 2020, I am Sherry Ann Noel. The government of Grenada is finalizing the loan agreement with the Grenada Cooperative Nutmeg Association before disbursing the financial package approved by Cabinet. During a meeting in May, Cabinet approved the grant of $1 million EC dollars to the GCNA, recognizing that sale of the produce was interrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic. The grant is to be used strictly for price support payments for farmers across the country and not to fund administrative expenses. In addition to the $1 million grant, government also proposed a loan of $2 million EC to the GCNA. The signed loan agreement, which is standard requirement, is mandatory for the Ministry of Finance to initiate payment to the GCNA. The government of Grenada is also providing financial support to the Grenada Cocoa Association. Earlier this month, Cabinet approved the grant of $1 million EC to the GCA to provide price support payments to farmers, similar to what was approved for the GCNA. A loan of $1 million EC was also approved by Cabinet for the GCA. Following Cabinet's decision, formal correspondence was sent to the Grenada Cocoa Association, which has acknowledged receipt of the proposal. The Ministry of Agriculture and Lands awaits formal correspondence from the GCA before finalizing the legal process, following which the money will be disbursed by the Ministry of Finance. Moving along, the Ministry of Agriculture says it is unfortunate that a draft document for a proposed merger between the Grenada Cooperative Nutmeg Association and the Grenada Cocoa Association has prematurely found its way into one of the nation's weekly newspapers. A merger between both associations has been talked about before, and Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell recently said, and I quote, Government has advocated this position for many years, as it would significantly reduce the cost associated with managing the commodity boards, unquote. Mr. Elvis Moraine, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, says after it was agreed in a previous meeting that there is a need for more policy direction on the subject, a Cabinet ratified committee was formed and this committee was working with the legal department. They sent documents to the committee and, and really it was not, we weren't privy to the document because the committee actually working to get this going. And, as I understand, afterwards also the draft bill was sent and with some comments, questions for comments. Unfortunately, that this draft bill found itself in, in the media, all right, in the media. And um, I could understand why maybe the, the farmers are upset because we didn't get to that stage yet of engaging the farmers, but the, the, the bill was in, in the media and it's very unfortunate that we find ourselves in that way, but that is where we are. Um, the cabinet has not made a final decision as it relates to how the process is gonna happen, the merger and so on. And we are still in that stage where we are preparing and I'm sure there are many questions back and forth from the legal, legal department and it, work, it works through the, the committee as, as set up. He says despite this, they will continue to engage with the farmers and other stakeholders. It's unfortunate and, and really it, it gives a kind of ugly start to things, but I believe we can we can really, once we, we get to that stage where we engage the farmers and the relevant stakeholders, we should be okay. So with the news, Grenada has secured a U.S. $8 million investment loan from the World Bank towards its digital transformation project. The funding is part of the wider Eastern Caribbean approved U.S. $94 million for four countries under the Regional Caribbean Digital Transformation Project. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Public Administration, Rhonda Jones, says Grenada digitization agenda falls within the Public Service Modernization Program. The project seeks to introduce a complete digital environment which will put infrastructure in place to support a digital government and create mechanisms to support a digital economy. We have been successful in securing two packages. Um, the DG4R is valued at 15 million US dollars and the Caribbean program is valued at 8 million US dollars. And so combined, these two projects 
will put in place the infrastructure that is necessary to support a digital government as well as to create the infrastructure that will then support a digital economy. And so this is where we are. We are very excited because this is a, an opportune time for us to embark on the digital transformation of government, taking into account the implications that um, COVID-19 would have had for us as a government in that our ability to provide immediate access, particularly in terms of financial relief. The local project will place emphasis on three areas, cybersecurity, workforce ready digital skills and technology adoption. Cybersecurity, data protection and privacy, that is one of the key areas that we will focus on. Um, as you will appreciate that once we get into the realm of doing business in the digital environment, then the whole issue of cybersecurity, um, the privacy of people's information and the protection of said information takes on greater importance. Workforce ready digital skills. Again, because we are pushing a digital by default approach in government, we will have to ensure that we upskill and reskill and retool all of the persons working in government, and we will also be providing support for private sector as well. And here we would want to pay attention to traditional businesses, and we would want to provide support for these traditional businesses to increase um, technology adoption. Dominica will receive U.S. $28 million, St. Lucia U.S. $20 million, St. Vincent and the Grenadines U.S. $30 million, and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States Commission U.S. $8 million to build an inclusive digital economy. The OECS Commission will receive a grant and the four Eastern Caribbean islands will receive interest-free financing with a maturity of 40 years including a grace period of 10 years. This is the National Report. More news after the break. Do you still have EC1 and 2 cent coins? If you do, then you have until the end of this month, 30th June, to spend them, exchange, or deposit them at your commercial bank. After 30th June, you will not be able to use your 1 and 2 cents as they will no longer be legal tender. Find them, spend them, exchange, or deposit them at your commercial bank. Act now and receive value for your 1 and 2 cent coins by 30th June. Welcome back. Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, salutes public service workers as Grenada joins with the rest of the world to observe International Public Service Day 2020 under the theme Action Today, Impact Tomorrow, innovating and transforming public services and institutions to realize the sustainable development goals. The celebration is extraordinary as Grenada's workers have remained resilient through the crisis. I take this opportunity to salute all public sector workers. On behalf of the government and people of Grenada, Caracou and P.T. Martinique, I thank you for your work during this uncertain and changing period. The COVID-19 pandemic has created yet another test of the resilience of our society, our economy, and especially the capacity of our government and public service to respond. Dr. Mitchell also appealed for those not doing their fair share during the trying period to step up and do their part. COVID-19 has thrust the public service into the spotlight, creating the catalyst for change. Change which is only possible through the commitment and dedication of the public officers. The role of the public officers comes with great responsibility, particularly in today's environment. Today, I challenge you to recognize that this change begins with each and every one of you. I challenge you also to see that the new future and to embrace it. This transformation is now a reality, and it has only just begun. 
And finally, in the news, four regional central bank governors will participate in a joint public event that will see them discuss how the Caribbean can rebound after COVID-19. The forum dubbed COVID and Economic Policy, Protecting Jobs, Businesses and the Economy takes place on Thursday, June 25th at 8 p.m. and will be broadcast and live streamed across the Caribbean. During the 90-minute forum, the governors, Timothy Antoine of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Dr. Dr. Richard Biles of the Bank of Jamaica, Dr. Gobin Ganga of Bank of Guyana, and Central Bank of Barbados Governor Cleveston Haynes will tackle issues related to the economic fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic. The group will engage with veteran Caribbean journalist Julian Rogers, who will moderate the event, and they will also take questions from viewers across the region. Viewers from across the region will be able to pose their questions to the governors via telephone, email, social media, and WhatsApp. COVID and economic policy protecting jobs, businesses, and the economy is the first of several online Caribbean economic forums the Central Bank of Barbados will be hosting this year. The event is a virtual spin-off of the in-person event the bank hosts annually. It will also be broadcast live on GIS Channel 22 from 8 p.m. on Thursday. And with that story, we come to the end of the National Report for Wednesday, June 24, 2020. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Sherry Noel, thanking you for viewing.